again, son of good family, as for what is meant by always following the Buddha's course of training, this refers to the practices of those such as this Saha world's Vairochana Tathagata, who, from the time when he first resolved to attain Bodhi, continued with non-retreating vigor to make gifts of an ineffable, ineffable number of his bodies and lives, peeling off his own skin to serve as paper, breaking his own bones to serve as pens, and drawing his own blood to serve as ink doing so in order to write out copies of the scriptures that, if gathered together, would reach as high as Mount Sumeru. Because of his profound esteem for the Dharma, he was never stinting, even in sacrificing his own bodies and lives. How much the less in sacrificing the royal throne, cities, towns and villages, palaces, parks and groves, or all his other possessions. He also practiced many other different kinds of difficult-to-practice austerities, until, finally, beneath the tree, he attained the great Bodhi, displayed the many different kinds of spiritual super-knowledges, manifested many different kinds of spiritual transformations, manifested many different kinds of Buddha bodies, and dwelt in many different kinds of congregations. Sometimes he dwelt in a congregation of all the great bodhisattvas. Sometimes he dwelt in a congregation of Shravaka disciples or Pratyeka Buddhas. Sometimes he dwelt in congregations of wheel-turning sage kings or lesser kings and their retinues. Sometimes he dwelt in congregations of Kshatriyas, Brahma elders or householders, and so forth, until we come to his dwelling in congregations of devas, dragons, others among the eight types of spiritual beings, humans, non-humans, or others. Abiding in many different kinds of congregations, such as these, with his perfectly full voice, like the quaking of thunder, adapting to their particular aspirations, he enabled a ripening of beings and continued on in this manner until he manifested entry into nirvana. I follow all such ways of training as these, and just as I do so with respect to the Bhagavat of this present era, Vairachana, so too do I also follow in this manner, in each successive mind moment, the training of all the Tathagatas, in all the Adams, in all the Buddha Chestras, to the very end of the Dharma realm and the realms of space, everywhere throughout the ten directions and the three periods of time. I continue in this way until the realms of space come to an end, until the realms of beings come to an end, until beings' karmic actions come to an end, and until beings' afflictions come to an end. My following their course of training is endless. It continues on in each successive mind moment, uninterrupted and free of any weariness in the actions of body, speech, or mind. Again, son of good family, as for what is meant by constantly according with beings, this refers to according with all the many different kinds of beings in the oceans of Chestras throughout the ten directions of the Dharma realm and the realms of space, including those who are egg-born, womb-born, moisture-born, or transformationally born, those who are born in and live in reliance on earth, water, fire, or wind, and those who are born in and live in reliance on the air or the plants and trees. These include the many different kinds of sentient beings with their various physical bodies, their various forms, their various appearances, their various lifespans, their various species, their various names, their various mental natures, their various kinds of knowledge and vision, their various aspirations, their various volitions, their various kinds of behavior, their various kinds of clothing, and their various kinds of food and drink, including those who dwell in many different kinds of settlements, villages, cities, towns, or palaces, 
and including even all the devas, dragons, and others among the eight kinds of spiritual beings, as well as humans, non-humans, and so forth, including those without feet, those with two feet, four feet, or many feet, those with physical forms, those without physical forms, those with perception, those without perception, and those with neither perception nor non-perception. I accord with all the different kinds of beings, such as these, by transforming my appearance in a manner that is appropriate to them. I then serve them in many different ways and present them with many different kinds of offerings, just the same as and no differently than if I was revering my parents or serving teachers elders, arhats, or others, up to and including the Tathagata. For those suffering from any of the many kinds of illnesses, I serve as an especially good physician. For those who have lost the path, I show them the right road. For those who are in the dark of night, I produce illumination. And for those who are poor, I enable them to find hidden treasure. In this way, the Bodhisattva benefits all beings equally. And why does he do this? This is because if the Bodhisattva is able to accord with beings, then this is to accord with and make offerings to all Buddhas. If he reveres and serves beings, then this is to revere and serve the Tathagatas. If he causes beings to feel pleased, then this is to please all Tathagatas. How is this so? This is because the Buddhas, the Tathagatas, take the mind of great compassion as their very essence. It is because of beings that they then produce the great compassion. It is because of the great compassion that they produce the resolve to attain Bodhi. And it is because of their resolve to attain Bodhi that they then realize the universal and right enlightenment. It is just as if there was a great king of trees in a wilderness desert that, so long as its roots find water, its branches, leaves, blossoms, and fruits all flourish luxuriantly. So too is it with the king of Bodhi trees that grows in the wilderness of samsara. It is all beings who form the roots of this tree, and it is all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who form its blossoms and fruit. So long as the waters of the great compassion benefit beings, then it is able to produce the fully developed blossoms and fruit of all Buddha's and Bodhisattva's wisdom. Why is this? This is because if Bodhisattvas use the water of great compassion to benefit beings, then they are able to gain Anuttara Samyaksam Bodhi. Therefore, Bodhi itself depends on beings. If there were no beings, then none of the bodhisattvas would ever become able to gain the utmost right enlightenment. Son of good family, you should understand the meaning of this in this way. It is because one has a mind of equal regard for all beings that one is able to develop perfectly complete great compassion. It is due to using the mind of great compassion to accord with beings that one is able to perfect one's offerings to the Tathagata, the Bodhisattva continues to accord with beings in this way until the realms of space come to an end, until the realms of beings come to an end, until beings' karmic actions come to an end, and until beings' afflictions come to an end. This according with beings of mine is endless. It continues on in each successive mind moment, uninterrupted and free of any weariness in the actions of body, speech, or mind. <laughs>